Live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman, and everyone out there. Thank you for joining us. So, uh, first things first, hey, uh, hopefully everyone out there is doing well and uh, nothing is going wrong. I'm trying to think, of course, Easter uh, Easter weekend's coming up. I know there's like Good Friday and, of course, Easter Monday. Computer America will be doing shows on both of those days. Just to give you a heads up, no time off. Uh, yep, we'll be uh, right back at it, bright and early, Monday uh, next week. So, everyone, thank you for joining us. And today on the show, it's our all Linux show, Cooking with Linux. Marcel Gagné uh, will be joining us. He is our, of course, Course, resident, resident Linux correspondent. And of course, uh, you know, hey, it's all about Linux. So if you've been curious about the operating system or if you are an advocate and a user of the operating system, I think Marcel does a good job of blending the, uh, you know, kind of the introductory ideas along with uh, some tips, tricks, and other things that I think even more experienced users would, uh, you know, would be very interested to hear. So this is for everyone. And hey, Welcome to the show. So before we get started, first things first, ComputerAmerica.com. That's where you'll find everything, including the show notes. Marcel puts a lot of effort into making the show notes. So after the show has aired and when everything is set in stone, we're going to put those up on the website and you can find everything that we talk about right there at ComputerAmerica.com. Also, be sure to check out the uh, the articles. We have a new review going up here in, uh, probably later today about the glance clock. If you don't know what that is, that is a, a wall clock. Yes, you know, one of the traditional wall clocks. But it's, uh, it's intelligent in that it integrates with your Google Calendar and whatnot. And just at a glance, hence glance clock, you can see your entire digital life on a wall clock. It's very cool. And again, that review should be going up later today. Now, okay, enough song for time. Why don't we go ahead and bring on our guest and waiting oh so patiently and oh so patiently in the wings, Marcel. Marcel, welcome back on to Computer America. Hi, I almost forgot to unmute my microphone. I do it all the time. <laughs> How you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear can you. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Uh, perfect. So hey, so so how you doing? Welcome back on. Uh, everything been going well since we last talked? Yeah, everything's been going well. It's uh, it's you know it's warming up, which means I've been spending some more time outside, which means hey, I'm in a better mood. Uh, <laughs> not that I'd like to think that I'm ever in a terrible mood, but you know, uh, it, it it does it does uh, you know warm your insides as well as your outsides when it starts to warm up on the outside. If you know what I mean. This, this winter, so, uh, yeah, this winter has been a long one. And if you're if you're like any uh, if you're like any of my neighbors, it's like the first warm day of the year. Everyone was on was on their mowers or you know using their lawn mowers and cutting the grass. I don't know why that's like the first thing on everyone's list, but uh, you know you know I, I I I think that's kind of insane. But say hey, since you brought it up, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take this opportunity for a public service announcement, if that's okay with you. Go for it. All right, listen. And it's it's not happening right this instant, but you know, especially if you're in the if you're in the northern climes, such as I am, you know, in northern United States, northern can you know, up in Canada, you know, anywhere where it's just really just starting to be, you know, a true springtime is arrival. 
Soon you're going to have dandelions on your lawn. <laughs> Leave them alone. The bees really? need them. The bees need them. It's a big source of protein for them to actually start doing their job over the summer. Leave the dandelions. You can cut them down when they turn into the furry things, you know, that are starting to spread seeds everywhere. But that patch of yellow on your lawn, just leave it. It's good for the planet. It's good for the bees. It's good for fruits and other things that human beings need to eat. There you go. That's my uh, public I, service. I, I had never, and you get to be lazy. It's wonderful. You don't have to get out there on your stupid lawnmower, which just makes a lot of noise and is really annoying <laughs> to everybody around you anyway. I have never heard of that. So great PSA. It's uh, true. Yeah. It's it, true. It, and of course, you know, the, I, I bet you a lot of people's natural instinct is to cut them down before they turn into the seed pods. But, uh, but yeah, there you go. There's a PSA. So great. Save the bees. Everyone lovely. Okay. So for everyone out there who has not heard of, uh, you know, our all Linux show or cooking with Linux, uh, Marcel, if you would please give us an introduction into what it is that you do, what brings you on here and why do you like talking about Linux? Well, I've been, I've been into, uh, I mean, I've been in computers for quite a long time, uh, possibly longer than the nation's longest running show on computers, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I've been, um, I, I kind of got caught by the whole uh, open source bug before Linux actually even existed. I mean, uh, as I was working my first job in computers. And then uh, in 1991, of course, the first Linux kernel was released. I actually found out about it in 1992. And, and I just got on board like you know hook line and sinker i thought it was i thought it was wonderful that this was happening it was the first time that real honest to god you know uh like a computer room power was available to an individual user sitting on a pc and um i just thought that it was awesome that that kind of power and performance you know the sort of thing that only um uh, corporate type computer systems uh, had available was mm -hmm. was something that you could use. So um, then I don't know. Fast forward, uh, I wound up writing an article just you know just for fun for Linux Journal. It turns out to be really popular. I start writing there, and I write for years and years and years. Uh, somewhere along the way, I started doing radio and television, and uh, you know uh, Linux and open source just becomes not only a part of my life, but something that you know I try to. <laughs> share the excitement with people as much as possible. So I've been doing this a long time now. That's good. That's good. And we definitely appreciate your uh, your experience and, of course, your point of view on this. And, hey, for anyone out there watching the video portion, you can see Marcel there where uh, yeah, he's taking occasional uh, sips from a glass of wine. And that, of course, I think is as good of a segue as I think I can muster up for today's wine. You know, you know, it's 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 crazy. Like every, you, you know, that like every month I try to come up with a different wine. And today I sit there and I crack open a bottle of wine and I pour myself a glass and I go to take a picture of the bottle, which is what I typically do. Mm -hmm. And uh, turns out that I pulled out the same bottle that I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to put it away. There it is for the people out there who are wondering. This is actually a 2017 temp Tempranillo Merlot from Spain, uh, Toro Bravo. And um, it, like I said, it, I'd already poured the glass, so it's not like I was going to put it away and you know and not drink it. But uh, but it's a great wine, and and the reason that uh, I got excited about this one last time, and I'll point it out again, is that um, it's really inexpensive uh, if you can get your hands on it, because as it turns out, uh, people went sort of nuts for it when it came out. Um, I just like my description. I'll steal my description from last month. Okay, sure. I've got. Uh, Deep ruby red, strong flavors of black cherry, dark coffee, maybe a little bitter chocolate. And the reason, and, and what I compared it to, and I'll compare it to it again, if you've ever had those lint chocolate bars, you know, the ones are like 85% mm. cocoa, you know, they're just a little on the bitter side. They taste like chocolate, but they're a little on the bitter side. It's got that kind of flavor to it. So um, it's really nice. It's, it's a good wine, easy drinking, highly recommended and super cheap. There you go. Okay. No. And hey, there's nothing wrong with uh, with having having <laughs> the same drink two months in a row. Uh, obviously, there you go. So that's perfect. Okay. Now we all have our glasses. We are all uh, you know lubricated. We're good to go. Uh, <laughs> I uh, inebriated. I don't know. What probably probably not that far. But uh, yeah, let's go we're ahead. Not, we're, and, not, we're not that far yet by any stretch of the imagination. Hey, let me ask you a question. Go for it. Um, everything sounds okay, right? Like you can hear yeah. me okay. It's no, all you sound great. You sound yeah, great. I got, a, I got a new phone. 
Uh, what phone did you I, get? I got a new phone. So we're, we're testing out my new phone today. I haven't actually ever used it to do something like this yet. So this is like the first time I'm doing it today. I upgraded my Pixel 2 to a Pixel 3. So this is actually a Pixel 3. Oh, Pixel. And uh, any reason why you decided to stick with the Pixel 3 line? Because uh, Samsung's really been you know hitting out of the park lately. You know, um, I kind of like, uh, it, well, as you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an open source guy. And yeah. although Android is, you know, is, is based on Linux and it's a, um, you know, at, at its core is, a, is a, um, an open source distribution. Uh, the Google phones are about as close as you can get to pure Android without additional crap being loaded up on the phone. And um, I mean, I have a I have a, a Samsung tablet. Tablet. I've got a uh, Galaxy Tab S2, which has a gorgeous screen, and I really love using it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's got like a whole bunch of crap that I can't uninstall that yeah. Samsung seems to think I'm gonna I'm gonna love, and I don't necessarily love it. And I haven't bothered to root the tablet, although I've been tempted to do it more than once. But I've got some games on the go, and I don't want to interrupt the games that I got on the go. But anyway, so the um, the Pixel line, aside from the fact that uh, like it's they're blazing fast phones, the camera on them is absolutely superb. I don't know that there's anything that compares to the Pixel cameras out there. Compares maybe, surpasses it, no. Right. Um, just made me think, you know, uh, I've been really, really happy with the Pixel 2, and uh, I've I, I had a 64 gig Pixel 2, and uh, believe it or not, I had like 240 apps on my phone, and I thought, what? you know, maybe if I had a little bit of extra memory as well. And um, so I gave my dad, uh, so my dad's got my Pixel 2, and now I've got this 128 gig. So I, I upped it to 128 gig uh, Pixel 3, and um, it's so far it's fantastic so i was kind of curious to see what you thought because of yeah. course it's the first time i used it for a show no you uh you you sound good the camera's actually uh, a little bit better than i guess you had a webcam before this so the camera's really really good uh, yeah no no real hiccup so far and i have to say that the pixel certainly one of those that I guess people really didn't trust Google to make a lot of hardware, <laughs> but uh, I think the Pixel line is one I that... Get, I get that. I get that because, I mean, Google, you know, Google has this habit of turning out stuff that people really, really like, and they go, eh, we're done, and they just close it. It's like, yep. you know, like like Google Plus and Hangouts and all this other or, sort or of like stuff. Or like Chromecast, yeah. Like countless other Google services. It's like, just leave it the heck alone with <laughs> Google. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? But they and seem I to be. Google, right. I also hate them for this. Yeah. But but they definitely seem to be sticking with the you know with the Pixel line. So definitely good to hear. And yeah, uh, overall you sound good. Good upgrade. Good choice. Uh, nothing wrong with that. So okay. So we do rumors and conspiracy theories. I love conspiracy theories. So yeah, let's go ahead and do it. You know, I don't have any conspiracy theories, but I do have some news today. Believe it or not, today today is the day that they're releasing. Well, they have released uh, the latest version of Ubuntu. And uh, in the distribution focus a little later on, uh, we will talk about Ubuntu, uh, sure. th this particular version of Ubuntu anyway. But uh, yeah, it got released today. It's called Disco Dingo. And um, the first story that I've got a link to, uh, I'm, I'm sending you to it because the register has like the best headline on this. Go ahead, read it. Disco, yeah. <laughs> Disco Dingo Fever. Yes. Ubuntu 19.04 has an infrastructure bent, snappier GNOME, and another stupid name. Yeah, yeah Disco Dingo. That's different. Uh, Disco will never die, but, uh, well, it will Disco never die again. Disco will never die. Disco. Oh, got put on hold, everyone. We will be right back with uh, Marcel. There we go. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear right. me? Yeah, no, yeah. Got put on hold for a second, but go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. That was weird. All right. Anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Disco will never die. Disco is awesome. But anyway, um, yeah. But, I mean, they do love, like, you know, weird names at Ubuntu. They really do. Anyway, so Disco Dingo is finally out. And um, one of the things that makes it interesting to me is, uh, first of all, it's, it's the first official distribution that has the Linux 5.0 kernel. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, we made a joke about this um, uh, last time, the idea that... Um, that um uh sorry I, I lost my mind for a second the <laughs> idea that uh, somebody made a joke that linus had run out of fingers to count so right. you know that's why they call it instead of four point something else 4.21 or something they decided to call it uh, kernel 5.0 so there you go it's kernel 5.0 and um and uh so it's like bleeding edge type stuff but the other thing that's cool is for people who actually install it directly 
uh, there's a special treat which hasn't happened before because out of the box you get the NVIDIA drivers. So mm -hmm. if you've got a uh, PC like the one that I'm running here, uh, which has got an NVIDIA card, you know, for uh, for gaming or just, you know, for snappier graphics on your desktop, it comes with the NVIDIA driver uh, right out of the box. You don't have to go hunting for it or doing weird stuff or whatever. As you install, it actually says, hey, We've got the NVIDIA driver, the official one. Would you like to install that, right? I mean, you don't even get that in Windows. You have to go out and hunt it down. Afterwards. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. This is pretty yeah. cool stuff. I, I've definitely noticed that where I'm using, of course, Windows, and uh, they have a whole third-party application that you have to download with, uh, with NVIDIA. And it's very invasive. So to not have to put that on your system, I think, is uh, a very, very, you know, it's a great thing. It's definitely a great thing. Yeah, no, I, th I think I think it's kind of awesome, and it's uh, it's it's one of those times where you go, hey, like for the very first time, you know, well, not the very first time, but it doesn't happen all that often that you know the uh, Linux desktop users get uh, stuff ahead of time. Oh, there was a story that I should have stuck in here. Maybe I'll I'll throw it in afterwards mm -hmm. since I'm since I did, since I just brought this idea. So yeah, so all of a sudden it's like, hey, I'm a Linux desktop user, and I get I, I get something that the Windows users don't get. This is really awesome. <laughs> No, yeah. they don't even get to do this. Mind you, to be perfectly honest, out-of-the-box drivers is something that Linux has been better at than Windows for a long, long time. You know, not having to go down and hunt down something to actually make your system work. Like, okay, I got to download a driver from wherever. Like, Linux just has insane, you know, uh, driver support for, you know, peripherals, for screens, for whatever you want. So, so that has been really, really great. But the thing that I was going to mention was, there was an article, and I should try to hunt it down because it was just a couple of days ago, and they were talking about uh, the idea that um, for all the jokes about the Linux desktop, you know, this is the year of the Linux desktop, this is the year of the Linux mm -hmm. desktop, Microsoft has made it clear that they want to make everything a service. Like, you've probably seen the ads for uh, for um, uh, Office 2019, right? Where I... Microsoft says, Office 2019 is out, but please don't buy it. Really, I, I I'm not and and to be clear to everyone, uh, you know, through uh, Netflix and through other and ad blockers and things like that, I really don't get a lot of ads. It's uh, <laughs> it's fortunate and unfortunate at the same time because I work in you know this kind of field and I don't get news. But uh, but but yeah, that makes sense because they always had Office 365 and 2019 was just for uh, and sorry if I'm jumping ahead of you, but Office 2019 was for like you purchase it for your 10,000 employees, you train everyone on it and you use it yep. for five, six years. And, you know, that's something. Uh, but you're saying that they're offering, they're saying not to buy it? Yeah, they actually have a commercial. You should try to Google it, uh, man, where I should try to Google it for you. Except if I try to Google it, I'll lose track of what I'm saying. Go for it. You know, my brain, but it doesn't work that well, that way. Uh, I'm easily distracted. Oh, look, squirrel. You know, that <laughs> sort of thing. Anyway, uh, yeah, they have an ad out which says, um, they have an ad out which basically says, Yes, we have uh, Office 2019, and yes, you can buy it, and it would be really great if you spent your money and so forth, but please don't. You know, it would be much better for you and for everybody else if you just went to Office 365 and so on. So anyway, so the article that I was reading was talking about this push from Microsoft to basically get off the desktop. In other words, you know, do everything in the browser a la uh, Chrome, uh, Chrome OS, you know, uh, like Chromebooks. We do everything in the browser. We don't install anything on the PC. We do everything over the Internet including pushing for the idea of the desktop as a service that's distributed on the internet. So the 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 take on this article, and again, I should look it up, but uh, the take on the article was interesting because they were saying that for all the jokes about this is the year of the Linux desktop and like, you know, everybody is going to be running Linux on the desktop at some mm -hmm. point, it's going to be that the last desktop standing is Linux because only people who seriously need a desktop operating system, you know, the people who are doing audio or who are doing, uh, you know, who are doing post-production video or something like this, you know, like, uh, um, you know, things that are really those who create for that matter. Like, yeah. Well, the, I'm sorry, uh, and, and so like things, so uh, people who create or work or maintain or implement, uh, whereas everyone else, like, you know, if you're out there and you just watch Netflix and you read articles and watch YouTube, you're a consumer, you're not really a creator. So you wouldn't really need a desktop environment, I guess. Well, yeah, you wouldn't need it. And, and, and to be perfectly honest, why would you bother? It's a lot more work than it needs to be to maintain a desktop operating system. I mean, the beautiful thing about a Chromebook is you just turn it on. And every yeah. once in a while it says, you know, uh, please reboot for the latest version. And you don't do anything. You don't have, you know, it just magically takes care of itself. 
Um, and I understand the attractiveness of that. I mean, I actually have a Chromebook in the other room and, um, and you know, the kids use it and it's great because it never needs any help. Like, <laughs> you know, um, so I can understand the push to doing that, but I thought it was an interesting take that eventually when everybody else has decided, you know, just buy our desktop operating system as, as a service, in other words, you know, you just boot it up like with a Chromebook. And in fact, Microsoft is selling their own version of a Chromebook, as you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. With a uh, with a with a web driven version of Windows, so to speak. Um, yeah, the only people who will run desktops are people who are running Linux operating so, systems, either developers or creators or whatever. So I, I have to say that uh, gets a little bit into the marketing of it all, but uh, Apple, well, actually more in the finances of it all, Apple as well has been saying that if they're looking for growth, it's not going to be in sales of the iPhone, it's not going to be in sales of the Mac or the MacBook Pro or whatever. Uh, their, you know, their future of of Apple is going to be selling things as a service, selling iTunes and you know, and music services and streaming services. Uh, that is the future of Apple. I think Microsoft has you know kind of taken note and said, "You're right. Uh, Amazon makes boatloads of money uh, powering the infrastructure behind the internet. Google makes boatloads of money through services and Gmail and thing like and things like that. Uh, just everyone seems to realize that." the money is in providing the service and not, you know, providing the product, I guess. Well, as, as my wife uh, likes to say, everybody's got one. And, uh, and if you remember last time, um, you know, and, and what she means by that is like, everybody's got one. Um, there are certain types of, of theft that have gone down dramatically, like things like television. Why? Because who needs a TV? Everybody's got like two or three of them. That's true. Uh, the only people who need them are the people who are desperate. Um, everybody else has got all this crap. I mean, and we've got like multiple versions of all this crap. So the idea of always getting another one or a new one is starting to become difficult to push. You remember BlackBerry, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, BlackBerry at one time was like the smartphone for the yeah. world before the iPhone came out and then it sort sort of disappeared and people wondered if it was ever going to start making money again all they turned most of their business into software as a service and they're thriving selling services <laughs> You know, so the, the, the exact it's, same happened, and just throw one more stick on the fire. The exact same, uh, the exact same thing happened. There we go, with uh, with IBM. People and and I I went to an online forum and they were like, IBM's the worst company. They they shot themselves in the foot. They hamstrung themselves. I give them five years. Uh, but they never really looked at IBM and said, oh, wait, they have uh, machine learning. They have servers. Like, IBM is not in the forefront anymore of hardware, but they are providing so many services, they're better off than ever. Yeah. So so this, this does not surprise me in the least that this is actually the case. I mean, there will continue to be a need for, well, let's go back to the idea of the desktop. There will continue to be a need for these things. But that need is not for everyone. Like everybody does not need to do this. So it, um, it's kind of it's, it's kind of a holdover, really, if you think about it. When computers first made their way into the home, with uh, well, and I'm just you know thinking back to my roots with Windows 95. I think was my first operating system. But uh, yeah, I, I mean. Computers came in one flavor. They came in PC or Mac, and you you had the like the PC that you bought was the same PC that uh, that everyone else bought, you know, way yeah. back when. Uh, what you're saying is that we're starting to see kind of that divergence where uh, computers are powerful and they can do everything, but does everyone need everything at this point? And we can kind of slim it down, sleek it down, or specialize. Yeah, and and increasingly, um, you know, I'm a huge fan of things like my Google Home unit here. I mean, I, I love intelligent assistants. You know, <laughs> privacy concerns aside, by the way, to quote to quote somebody else, <laughs> you have no privacy. Get over it. Um, but <laughs> the uh, I, I love those types of devices. And one of the things that's interesting about that is we think of them as speakers, and in fact, people call them that Alexa speakers. Home speakers. Pod speakers, yeah. Google Home speakers. And the whole reason we think of them that way is you don't upgrade that hardware. That hardware just talks to the massive intelligence of, you know, servers that, uh, well, use Google or Amazon or whatever has distributed around the planet. So we don't actually ever need to update any of those things. Now, it, sure, I could put all that on my PC. You know, mm -hmm. but I would need increasingly bigger and stronger and more powerful PCs to be able to manipulate all that data locally. 
Or I could just let some, you know, service provider out there, aka Google or Amazon or or Apple, and uh, let them handle all that stuff. And then I just use a simple little device that accesses all that amazing processing power. Right, and really, and I'm sure that you saw the uh, the big news with the black hole that happened about a week ago. Of we course. got a first image with the black hole, and it's kind of the same thing where to actually be able to pull down that much data to be able to eventually make the photo that we all saw. Uh, they were taking data from every satellite around the world. They were using computer power from, you know, uh, is it SETI or no? But but anyways, they they had a program where they were pulling computing power from like everyone around the world. The point is, distributed systems are infinitely more power powerful than anything you can have at home, and they allow us to do stuff that just isn't possible at home. So it okay. makes a lot of However, sense. However, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a wrench into these gears. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Please, I, I love wrenches. One of the things that's really kind of amazing is when they did the black, you know, to, to, to image the black hole took insane amounts of data. Like we're talking five you know, petabytes. petabytes, five petabytes, you know, and, and it could not be transmitted over the internet <laughs> at anything resembling decent speeds. So although they use computing power from all over the world to crunch this stuff, to be able to get all the data in one place to make the crunching happen, they had to basically FedEx hard drives, piles and piles of hard drives yeah. all over the world because to transmit that kind of data would have taken months. <laughs> Did you see, and, and I'm sure that you're familiar with Reddit, uh, there was a Reddit user that did... Yeah, I, I know. There is a Reddit user that did some math, and I'm sure you heard about the the recent one terabyte micro SD card. Uh, he mentioned yeah. that uh, if you strap or if you if you load up a carrying pigeon with as many one terabyte micro SD cards as you as a pigeon could possibly carry, uh, a network of pigeons, even with packet African loss, Europeans. I, well, those are swallows, but. Um, it, if you load up pigeons with as many micro SD cards as you could, even with packet loss and even with pigeons, you know, rerouting, uh, it would yep. still be faster than the internet uh, to send yep. carrier pigeons. It that that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, no, that's it's it's kind of fascinating to consider that, isn't it? Right. Sorry, I was using a, you 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 made me think Monty Python, of you course. know, African and European swallow. Well, it could be carried. <laughs> Are you suggesting African. coconuts migrate? But I do not suggest that. Instead, let's uh, focus back in on this article, Disco Dingo, and uh, yeah. So, uh, was there anything okay. else about the whole update to Disco Dingo? That we now we'll, we'll 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 talk more about the distribution in a couple of minutes because I want to talk about uh, some of the perils of upgrading. <laughs> but uh, before we run out of our first half hour here, let's take a look at a couple of other things. Um, you remember I keep talking about the idea that that uh, Linux is actually the most popular operating system in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, Red Hat, aka IBM, because IBM owns Red Hat now. Right. Uh, you know. Uh, looking around and talking to industries and found out that basically there isn't a business alive that is not using Linux in a big way, either as servers or desktops or whatever. Basically, and not just Linux, but open source software of all kinds, whether it's Apache or whether it's it's Postfix for sending mail or that sort of thing. Um, it is an open source world. So when you talk about, you know, are people curious about Linux and open source? It's only because they don't know that they are all running Linux and open source every single day. There isn't a person out there listening who isn't using Linux and open source, because if they Google anything, they're using Linux and open source. If they order anything from Amazon, they're using Linux and open source. It's just like everywhere. So it's a good, it's an interesting article. The only problem with it is it's ZDNet, okay? Or ZDNet, if you prefer. And ZDNet, if you're listening, I love you. I kind of do actually, but I hate you as well because you've got a stupid autoplay video ad. Yeah. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Anyway, <laughs> well, well, no, you're absolutely right, and, uh, and that goes into a whole other thing with uh, Mozilla, and you know, I think everyone's really taking a stand against autoplay videos. But even with that being said, uh, no, you're absolutely right with uh, everyone using Linux at the current time. But it goes back to a conversation we were just having, where do people even need to know that? You know, uh, if they can just get what they want, uh, yeah, Linux can be the winner. But unfortunately, there there will not be thunderous applause. There will be well, who cares? And, and that's, uh, I don't know, I, it's probably a good thing, e even if Linux wins. 
Okay, I'm going to give you two quick other ones because I, I can see we're running close to the half hour. Here's the quick one. Sure. There's an article here from opensource.com which compares a bunch of open source messenger clients. And the reason I mentioned that one is I know a lot of people who use um, who use Hangouts, okay? And of course, it's yet another one of those things that Google, 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 please. Anyway, Google is killing Hangouts. Actually, they're not really killing it, just the way they haven't killed Google+. Plus. They've just made it so that it's part of their paid platform. So if you're a G Suite user and you're willing to spend big bucks with, uh, with Google, uh, you get to continue using all those things. So you remember that whole thing about we're closing down Google Plus for security issues? And I said that it was bollocks. I right. said that you know it was it was just it was it was nonsense. It was crap. Well, it right. was because they're continuing to use it. It's just that it's a paid product now. It's something that you have to pay for. So they use the whole security thing as a way to get people to you know understand this is why we're closing it down. We're so sorry. Oh, by the way, we fixed all the bugs that existed because it's part of our paid for product now. Anyway, and uh, so this is a collection of open source messaging clients. It's not the be all and end all. Which list. Um, actually, we let's go ahead and get into the list when we come back. Uh, we're going to go to oh, break okay. here in about ten seconds. So everyone, Marcel Gagné doing very, being very conscious of the clock. We appreciate that. Everyone, we'll be right back. More Cooking with Linux, more Marcel Gagné, more Computer America right after this. Everyone, stay tuned. Greece is cheap. But the airfare costs a fortune. Paris? Not much closer. And again, airfare... What about Puerto Vallarta? Let's face it, flying anywhere is just too expensive. Wait, what's this? Low-cost airlines. With one call to low-cost airlines, you'll drastically slash your travel costs. We're talking insanely low airline prices to any of your favorite destinations. Where would you like to go? London, Rome, Costa Rica, Australia? Wow, that's cheap. So why wait? Call now to learn how crazy cheap it is to fly anywhere in the U.S. or international. Our prices are so low, we can't publish them. The only way to get them is to call to instantly hear the most amazing best deals on airlines travel. It's that easy. So call now and start packing. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. That's 800-215-4461. We are all Brother Wolf. Ten years ago, a group of locals banded together to create positive change. We took animals into our homes, held adoption events at local retailers, and talked to the community about our mission to help build a no-kill Asheville. A decade later, we have achieved so many victories for animals in need. There's been so much progress, yet there's still so much to do. As part of our year-long celebration, we encourage you to become a member of our special Compassionate Circle program. With a monthly donation of $10 or more, you will have behind-the-scenes access to the work we are doing at Brother Wolf. Our goal is to reach 1,000 members because we receive no government funding. Working together, we can help build and sustain no-kill communities. Learn more at CompassionateCircle.BWAR.org. We are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization. And welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 32 minutes past the hour as we continue on here. And everyone, if you're just joining us, hey, check out the podcast, wherever podcasts are heard. Simply search Computer America and we should pop right up. Uh, it's today's interview in its entirety. If you'd like to check it out, if you miss any part of it, if someone was bothering you while you were trying to listen, hey, don't worry. We got you covered. Uh, also, be sure to check out the show notes at Computer America. Again, Marcel puts a lot of work into these and you can check it all out there. Plenty of links, plenty of sources. And uh, yeah, you can, hey. Uh, definitely see it there. So with that being said, Marcel continues on with us. Uh, everyone can see him there. And hey, why don't we go ahead and get back to this list now? And, and of course, uh, first things first, I just had to refresh myself. I keep forgetting that Google Hangouts is going away. Uh, well, not going away. They're they're turning it into an, another service, like you said, through the paid support feature uh, or G Suite. But um, yeah, Google really can't like they have i i honestly think google hangouts is a really great service you you and i used it many many a time uh they just can't seem to really stick to anything so hey maybe looking for a third party would work here too yeah my 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 uh i mean i i have people that i have been you know communicating with for the last few years on hangouts it's kind of like the first place that we go to it's like oh you jump on hangouts and you either chat or you do video or whatever and of course 
Google is, has put out, like, now they're trying to push people to use Duo, but Duo is entirely like a video type app. It's not like, a, you know, an, an instant messenger chat app, or at least I can't figure out if that's the case. Right. And of course, if you tell people, well, hey, jump on Duo, it's like, you know, not jump on what, you know, um, <laughs> they, they have no idea what you're talking about. So one of the things that I am that, you know, I'd like to think about is that the the app that you're using is something that's kind of open source. I mean, I, I use WhatsApp as well, and I use uh, Facebook Messenger because hey, I've got I you know I've got friends and family who are unfortunately on Facebook, so unfortunately that's where people are. So you use where you know you use the messaging platform yeah. where people are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's definitely the case. But uh, I, this particular article, and I, I invite people to go and take a look at it. This is hardly a be all and end all list, but it's actually a list of you know what other um, open source and and I I have a problem with Lime being in this list for uh, different reasons. I question just how how open source it actually is, or how open it actually is. But there are some interesting things in there, including Riot and Signal. And um, and I tend to agree with their conclusion on the end of it. Of all the things that are in there, Signal is an instant messaging client, one that actually allows you to also do video and, and audio calls and so forth. Actually seems like a pretty good idea. Riot is actually kind of neat as well, but Riot just, there's, there's no just you know install it and run on your system. It's like well which which server are you going to go through and what client are you actually going to use? Riot is more of a of an infrastructure for a whole bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there are some really cool Riot.im clients out there. Things that basically look like Slack or look like Discord or things like this. Um, and uh, I think that one is definitely worth taking a look at. But for just like I said, just for simple, I just want an instant messaging slash chat client on my phone um i kind of like signal a lot um right. there are other things like i mean if i were to pick up my phone which i'm not going to because i'm using it to chat with you here there are like tons of i i have i don't know a dozen different instant messaging clients on that phone because of course i try to use whatever people are using right um but um yeah so riot is cool uh, signal is cool um uh, Telegram, I have had an on again, off again relationship with, but uh, Signal, I think, has one of the best chances because it's one that some people have actually heard about, unlike uh, some of the other things that are out there. So, I just thought I'd throw it out there for people to take a look at because instant messaging is taking a bit of a shakeup because of right. the uh, Hangouts thing. But you know, worth yeah. taking a look at. Yeah, no, uh, for sure, and of course, uh, Facebook Messenger. It, it's important to know which one of these are owned by which company. Uh, I think yes. that uh, <laughs> uh, Messenger, of course, owned by Facebook because it's Facebook Messenger. But I think WhatsApp is also owned by Facebook at the same time. So. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so so when people say, "Oh, I I like my privacy, so I'm going to get away from Facebook and go to WhatsApp," it's like. Eh, you tried. You tried really hard. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so knowing who who owns what is uh, very important. And of all these, I will say the only ones that I've actually tried uh, are like Line and I think Signal uh, and maybe Viber like once, but not really. Um, some of these are more popular in and and you know uh, you talk about where people actually use these things. Uh, they're more popular in different countries. Uh, obviously, Computer America we're huge in America, but we have listeners all around the world. I'm sure that if you're listening, let's say in like Taiwan, uh, you know, uh, things like a uh, line or, you know, uh, WhatsApp or things like that are going to be much more popular than a lot of these other options. And your friends are just going to say, I've never heard of that. Uh, definitely check where you live. And uh, some of these will be a lot more popular than the others. Well, it's like single server coffee machines. <laughs> How's that? Right. Okay? Like if you're in North, if you're in North America, okay, in the U.S. in particular, but in Canada as well, uh, almost everybody you know. Uh, I mean, I realized at one time that there was uh, there was that other one, but everybody is using a curate, okay, mm -hmm. and that's basically people who think that you know that your basic donut shop coffee is actually pretty good, okay. However, if you go to Europe or Australia or some other parts of the world, everybody uses Nespresso. That's what you've yeah. got for single serving coffee. And by the way, I have a Nespresso virtual machine. Mm -hmm. I am never going back. <laughs> like it is, you know, 
for single serving coffee, like if you want if you want that convenience of not making a full pot or and you want something that doesn't require you to take out a whole pile of gear and so forth, and you don't want to spend a couple of thousand dollars on a you know industrial sized coffee machine, Nespresso baby. By the way, Nespresso, if you want to hire me. <laughs> I invited Nespresso on the show and they're like, yeah, we're going to wait until like they have like a big kitchen and, you know, big kitchen expo kind of going on. And then they never got back to me. I have to contact them because they were supposed to come on the show, but uh, glowing yeah, endorsement. Well, you should, actually, it would be an interesting thing to have on the show, especially since, you know, Computer America. What is that? Well, actually, computer people all drink coffee. So it works. It works for me. <laughs> they're fueled on coffee. Uh, I, never, I never started to drink coffee in the, in the amount that I started drinking it until I went to, you know, to school to learn computer programming. Uh, <laughs> so hit college and it was like, you know, all of a sudden it's like, you know, the caffeine is just going back anyway, <clears throat> but I digress. I digress. So that's one. And the only other thing that we should do on the news, cause let's clear that out so we can talk about other things is sure. With the windows 95 gets a big upgrade. Windows okay. 90. I mentioned that offhandedly way, way back when, when I said this was my first operating system. Uh, yeah, I never expected to see it back in the headlines. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, some some madman uh, decided to create a um, uh, Windows 95 as an app. like, And I'm talking about the entire Windows 95. And if you go to GitHub and you take a look at Felix's page, Felix Riesberg is the, is the, uh, the madman who created this thing. Um, if you go and you take a look at that, you'll find that you can download the latest version. And it's actually a package that you can install on your Linux system. And it's got everything. It's got Internet Explorer. You can play uh, Minesweeper and, and Solitaire and stuff like that. You can actually you can even install some additional you know other apps and so forth to run under Windows 95. It's it, oh, and you can get it for Mac as well. It's it, like it's Windows 95. It's oh. the whole damn thing. You can actually install it and run it. It's um, it's. It's some, fascinating and weird. Some and, of these um, words, so, some of these words are giving me flashbacks because I I recall like when I first started getting involved with Computer America, Craig was still running the Computer America website using Front Page, and I'm talking like this was like 2000 and like seven or six or something like that. Um, man, and, and you know, it's, uh, and of course, plenty of games, Doom, Wolfenstein 3D, all that uh, kind of good stuff. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we do the show here, we record it, we also air it live on the radio, but the recording of the show ends up being, depending on what we do, about 800 megabytes, give or take. Uh, this whole package that, you know, I'm just looking at the, uh, you know, at the installer zip files and exes, uh, South of 300, this this whole operating system is three times smaller than this recording of this one show. To, to compare that, the latest version of Ubuntu, the one that we were talking about at the top of the show, mm -hmm. um, is more than two gigabytes. Okay, on, on like it's a two gigabyte ISO file to install right. it. Okay, just... <laughs> <laughs> just as a comparison <laughs> it's tiny it's tiny but uh but you know and, and you who would actually enjoy this i think industry would actually really enjoy this someone's still working with windows 95 because there's a lot of systems out there that unfortunately still run windows 95 and to see someone maintaining it and updating it if not just for nostalgia but for other practical reasons uh yeah i'm sure someone out there really appreciates this yeah, I had to throw it out there. The reason I actually thought about throwing it out there today, and the reason I put it out there, oddly enough, has to do with the, uh, you know, my distribution of the day. You thought I'd never get there. I know I'm <laughs> jumping a lot. You know, for people who are listening out there, I apologize. Remember what I said about the whole, you know, ooh, a squirrel. I'm like that. I just jump from thing to thing. I, I'm, I'm like the bee who flitters from one flower to another, that sort of thing. Remember, leave, leave, leave the dandelions on the lawn until the flowers disappear the bees need them anyway um so the uh, let's let's jump ahead we'll go back to the podcasting sure. thing in a second let's just let's just go back to ubuntu for a second so so one of the you remember like you know i i said i said i'm coming down to the wire and i told you this because i decided to do something insanely stupid i thought hey today is the ubuntu gets released and of course i'm running kubuntu which is the kde desktop or the plasma desktop version of ubuntu and i'm running 1810 and i thought i'm just gonna upgrade my <laughs> pc let's just, let's just, before, just before the show in fact i'm gonna upgrade it for the show and i partition my discs out in such a way that i have a partition for the operating system and i have a partition for the data okay 
and that way my data can can travel across different distributions and and updates and stuff like that and i don't have to restore my entire pc the trouble is i had somehow managed to fill up the operating system partition completely and so it wouldn't do the upgrade and i'm going like oh man i can't figure out how to do the upgrade on this because it keeps telling me it doesn't have the space oh by the way there's a screenshot of disco dingo with the uh, with the um with the Disco Dingo background there. Isn't that, isn't that yeah, cool? Nice. Doesn't that look kind of cool? V very geometric and, you know, kind of wolf-like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it. It's, it's kind of cool. Anyway, so I didn't have any other space, so I'm doing a due release upgrade because my PC was actually running um, 1804, which yeah. is a long-term release. So I had to do the uh, due release upgrade dash D, which meant development release, so that I could do 1810. Anyway, the point is, I didn't know I, there wasn't enough space. So there's a command. I'm not going to get you, you know, we won't read it online here. DPKG dash query, you know, <laughs> which actually sorted all my packages in a way so that I would know what the biggest things that I had installed on the system were. And lo and behold, I had installed Windows 95 as an app. Um, and it was like the biggest thing on my disk. And it was like, oh, if I get rid of that, I practically have all the space that I need. Uh, because of course, you know, it's got swap space and a whole bunch of other things. Right. That's, that's almost everything. And of course I was testing the latest version of crossover for somebody and I had a bunch of other things. So I decided to find out what my biggest packages were. So there's a cool line for the people out there who might be, uh, you know, thinking about doing something like this and might try to be trying to figure out what are, like, if you've ever done this with your I've, Android phone or your iPad or something, you try to find out what the biggest apps are because you want to install a new game and there's no space. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I, I've, I've had to do this exact process for upgrading from Windows 7 to Windows 10. And for some reason, Windows decided that you had to pre-download the entire operating system. So I had my operating system and all my files, and then I had to download like uh, 13 gigs of data to uh, or, or whatever it was. And then I could install the operating system. Like if it just swapped it out, you know, and I didn't have to pre-download the whole thing, uh, great. But anyways... I had to do this exact thing on a Windows uh, uh, on a Windows system, and I had to sort through my hard drives and look for the largest files and uh, applications and things like that. Uh, let me tell you, it took hours. It took hours to find well, enough space I to do it. I started to do it the long way. I started to I started going through. Okay, well, what have I got installed? What do I think is big? And then I thought, oh God, there's got to be a better way to do this. I mean, I'm you know I'm a Linux guy. I work at the command line. There's got to be a better way to do this. So. <laughs> As it turns out, there's a better way. And while I did this better way, as it turns out, there's actually even another way to do it. There's actually a um, uh, there's actually a program that you can download. Uh, which uh, let me see, do I still have it up? No, I probably don't have it up anymore. But it's 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 a um, a command line that actually allows you to uh, to just do exactly what I'm doing there. But anyway, if if people are watching and you're running an Ubuntu system and you want to find out what's taking up all the space on your PC, just use that command line. Like literally copy and paste this and you will know exactly uh, what the biggest things on your, what everything that's installed and all the biggest things on your PC. And you're welcome, by the way, because, you know, this took me a while to figure out, but um, this, this is <laughs> like, like I said, put, you know, put this in a script or just copy and paste this and right. you will know everything that you've got installed sorted from smallest to biggest. So there you go. As, as long as they, as there's nothing Linux, uh, Linux equivalent to windows users where it's like, Oh, the system 32 files taking up all this space. Let me just delete system 32. Uh, yeah. As long as there's no equivalent that you can like, uh, no. just break the operating system. No, no, no. You're not going to break the operating system doing this because you're you're actually looking at individual packages. So you can you can be smart about this. You can say, look, I, I haven't played I haven't played this game in ages. I haven't used this particular program in ages. It's like, and there are like tons of things that I mean. I, I didn't show you everything in my list. Right. I just gave you a sample on the uh, show notes here. But there were like tons of things that that um, you know that I wasn't using, and it's like I'll just then you can just remove those what is, packages. What is Ducky and TV? Else. And then I was able to finish the update. Hmm. So D Ducky TV, I am interested in that. What is that? TV show tracker. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we probably shouldn't talk about it on the show. <laughs> Let's not. Okay. So with that being said, let's go ahead and um, and so we skipped over. <laughs> Uh, podcasting, podcasting, of course, a big part of Computer America here as well, because, hey, not everyone has uh, strictly 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern to listen to the show. So, hey, this is pretty big. But uh, casting pods, 
What are you talking about? Yeah, what, what okay. Um, there are actually, maybe we should uh, do a show on podcast clients. Maybe I'll think about that the next we time. We can do that. This wasn't about podcast, podcast clients. I actually started doing some podcasts, uh, like specifically as podcasts, you know, uh, and um, and I call them open source journeys. I've got a couple more in the can that I haven't published yet. There are only two that have been published at the moment, but I've got a couple more that I'm working on. Anyway, the second one I held, I had some other projects that had to go in between. Short version. I really wasn't happy with the uh, with the um, the quality of what I had come up with, and um, I used a, a product, an online uh, system called Zencaster. If you go to Z E N or Z E N C A S T R dot com, yeah, um, yeah, Zencaster is actually pretty neat. But I thought, you know, I'm going to save my. Here we go. I'm going to save myself some time by purchasing their um, twenty dollars a month uh, post production stuff. Mm-hmm. And the reason I thought was it will automatically compile my recording, the person I'm talking to is recording, and it'll you know mash them all together and clean them up, you know, clean up the audio, and it's worth it to spend you know a few bucks a month. And I did this like for a couple of three months, and uh, my, with all due respect, Zencaster, I've canceled it. I've gone back to you know free, or I'll use something else. We'll find out what. But the point was that the combined. It kept dropping out. So Zencaster, to be fair to Zencaster, mm-hmm. was recording everything the other person was saying on the other side. Okay? Right. And it was recording everything I was saying on this side. But there would be these dropouts, and I could not hear the other person. So I'd start talking over top of them. Or I'd be saying things like, hello, are you still there? Like, <laughs> Yeah, like, did, it really takes you out of the conversation when you have to wonder if the other person is even hearing you. So, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so we had all these long pauses, and the conversation lasted longer than it probably should have because, you know, we kept jumping back and doing these things. And then I, and then from this, from this weird sort of, you know, dropouts in the conversations and things like this, I had a final product that I really didn't like. And I went in and I started editing it, just cleaning out the portions from that combined audio file. Now, this is the important part. I was using combined audio file, the one that Zencaster created, okay, mm. the, the post-production file. And I just took out massive chunks of the conversation. Like, obviously, we're talking over top of each other here, I can tell. Took out massive chunks. Took out massive chunks. Anyway, short story long, I let this linger because there are other things that I need to publish for the site um, that I was working on. This uh, LPI.org is where I was uh, I was doing some work for them. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just sort of let it linger. And then somewhere along the way, this light went off. You know, you ever see, uh, you know, all those little cartoons? It's like light bulb. Yeah, and light bulb. You know, light bulb. And, yeah. and I thought, I have the original raw files for you know her channel and my channel i was talking to carla schroeder at the time Mm -hmm. so i have her channel and i have my channel let's go back in and bring in both files in other words i paid the money to try to make my life simple as it turns out it made my life more complicated in this case and i brought up audacity which is actually a um an amazing audio editor, which, by the way, is was originally uh, available only for Linux, but you can actually, I believe, download it for both Windows and Macs these days. Yes, completely, op- completely free, completely open source, and it does it all. Like it is amazing. And I learned how to use this package in ways that I never thought possible because I was working for, and and it became this, it became this mania. I decided that I was going to clean up this audio and I was going to make it work for God's sake. And I found out that I could do things like I could basically drop the audio in my channel to zero while she was talking. And in the places where she was saying, Marcel, are you still there? Did I lose you? And I was talking, I could drop down her audio, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which of course leaves these big massive chunks of, of empty space, right? Right. Now, in Audacity, Audacity has all these amazing filters and, and tools and things that are built into it. So there were things like automatically adjust the gain so that, you know, the it, it's, it's not like an auto-tune, you know, but what it does is it makes sure that you never go above and beyond a certain level right. so that all of a sudden the sound is at a decent level that you can hear properly. And then there was this magic filter. Okay. Which What's I have that? a picture of on the screenshot. So the one that you're, you know, for the people who are watching, the video portion of this, you'll see what's happening. It's called truncate silence. 
And this was like the last great discovery. So <laughs> I had cleaned up the audio on, on this whole podcast in a way that I was relatively happy with. But it's an hour and a half long at this point with a whole bunch of empty spaces. And then I look in the list of, uh, of effects. They call them effects on Audacity. And there's this thing called truncate silence, which basically looks for anything longer than half a second and cleans up the silent portions. And of course, you can tell it with the level, like it's got a, a default level for detecting silence and you can right. play with this. And the end result was like nothing I could have expected or dreamed of. It was beautiful. It was clean. The conversation is peppy. It sounds like we're sitting in the same room going back and forth. And it was it was brilliant. It was wonderful. So um, so for anybody out there who is doing podcasting and is looking for a post-production audio app, there's an open source app out there called Audacity that will do it all for you. And um, and like I said, I, I actually went out and spent money with the idea of, you know, making my life easier. Yeah. And it turns out that it was this great open source tool that saved my bacon. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, Audacity, they are. Yeah. Cheers to Audacity. They are. I'm so sorry. That program was one of the first things Craig had me download when I first started doing this because if I ever needed to edit or you know uh, you know sometimes guests come on they're like hey can we get uh, our segment kind of cut out from everything else and sent to us yeah you know hey we, we would use audacity and especially for sending like snippets and uh, of the conversation uh, we have the raw file of course but like I said the video is uh, a good 800 megabytes and then the audio is a good 90 megabytes uh, if you just need to send someone a 20 minute clip and you could compress it even further, you know, just so that they can hear it. It's not, it doesn't have to be high fidelity or anything like that. Uh, Audacity clips extremely easily. It's very, very low learning curve or uh, shallow learning curve, I guess. I don't know, but uh, very, very easy to do. And yeah, we've been using Audacity here for quite a while. I kind of moved away from it, uh, you know, just uh, because I haven't really had to edit a lot of things. I'm yeah. not going to say I do it perfect uh, every time here on the show the first time, but oh, um, it's always perfect, dude. Yeah, it's always perfect. Thank you. But uh, yeah, I, I I think Audacity as far as post production go, um, I used Adobe Suite, the Creative Cloud Suite, for the longest time, and I found that to be really easy to use. But after I stopped using that, Aud I'm sorry, Audacity came right back. Um, yeah, so. I would say either Adobe, if, if you can afford it, it's like, you know, 15, 20 bucks a month. But if not, Audacity is more than capable. And like you said, open source and free. Yeah, and, and the number of tools that are available, like, you know, the, the effects as they're called in there is, is just phenomenal. Hey, let's jump ahead because I, I, I'm mindful of the time, as you pointed out. I, I'm trying to be good. Um, I'm, let's let's close it out with something fun and crazy. And, and um, I did not I see this one coming. I did not see this one coming. This is weird. <laughs> Since we're talking about Ubuntu, there is an Ubuntu manga. Manga for the people who don't know Japanese comics. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the big eyed characters, all that sort of stuff, which, uh, which uh, frankly has been sort of copied by uh, Pixar lately. Well, um, and, well and, and hey, fun fact, uh, and this is something that I picked up in my, you know, casual internet browsings. Uh, the reason that manga looks the way that manga does and, and anime and what have you, uh, the Japanese actually copied American cartoons such as Betty Boop. And, oh, you know, if you, think, if you think Betty Boop, uh, you know, a lot of emotion is shown through the eyes. And yeah, so it's actually a ripoff of early American animation. But of course, Japan took it and went bonkers with it but yeah it's just a little fun fact there but please go ahead well in, in that case then um just, that's cool that's cool i did not know that but that's fascinating so if you look up ubuntu and there's a uh, there's a link obviously in the show notes there ubuntu is a ubuntu manga magazine about students that are basically trying to convert people to linux and open source and you can download all of the magazines free and read them i've actually read like about four of them now <laughs> <laughs> it's it's surprisingly high quality it an amazing amount of work has what's gone the, into this what what's the what's the idea behind it because obviously you know we talk about uh ubuntu here and open source and things like that uh here on the show but uh, that does not make a quote ubuntu romantic school comedy what's the story and, and just real quick like what's a what's a summary of the storyline um, it's, it's, uh, a group of students who have a school computer club 
Uh-huh. And um, and of course they're trying to get you know I mean it's it starts out really really slow it's like you know as uh, people will come to our computer club and we'll you know we'll be we'll be really popular kids you know because you know they're they're <laughs> types and so forth we'll be really popular kids and and they'll come to our computer club and they find out that the best way to actually get to get people to come and stuff like that is to help people out you know to show them what they can do with these things to rescue their computers and it's. I mean, it's, you know, it's the adventures of kids in an Ubuntu-themed uh, computer club at a high school. Who knows? It's, uh, may, may people it's, out there will actually identify really well with it. But, Marcel, there is music playing softly in the background. Uh, we're out of time. And being mindful of the time, I will say, you nailed that perfectly. Uh, kudos to you. <laughs> so, for everyone out there, if you want to check out the show notes, we'll have that at Computer America. Marcel, I'll let you have the last word. If people want to hear more of your writings, your musings, your videos, where can they go? Uh, hey, listen, you can go go to Twitter, WFTL, writer and free thinker at large. That's what WFTL stands for. So twitter.com slash WFTL or look up free thinker at large, all one word on YouTube, youtube.com slash free thinker at large, my videos. And if you feel like just go to my website to see what I might be chatting about, uh, it's marcelgagne.com, M-A-R-C-E-L-G-A-G-N-E.com. All right, perfect. And uh, hey, until next month, thank, thank, thank you so much. And sorry again for, uh, you know, hey, kind of getting to you late, but you nailed it. You did perfect. So everyone out there, this, uh, of course, it's uh, Cooking with Linux, Marcel Gagné, All Linux Show. And hey, until tomorrow, everyone, where we should have Darius Derek Shani on the show. Everyone, have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Cheers.